Hallelujah. 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 We want to bless the name of the Lord once again for this privilege of coming before him and to learn at his feet. Let us pray. Unto you, eternal rock of ages, we humbly bow. We present ourselves as usual before you to come and honor your name, to honor what you've accomplished in our lives, to praise, to appreciate your works, your wonderful works, the works of healings, the work of deliverance, the work of salvation, the work of exaltation, the work, the work of deliverance, the work of bringing us to the place where we can feel, taste, and touch you. We give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we proceed into learning at your feeling, to understanding you better, we ask that your presence will overwhelm us, helping us to be able to, 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 to activate in, in our mind and the spirit, to be able to understand you, to know what you say to us as your people, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This morning, by the grace of God, I want to speak on what I titled The Cloud of Witnesses. The Cloud of Witnesses. We thank God for the, the seminar we had yesterday. It was awesome. It was glorious. So today I want to build on it, helping us to understand what Cloud of Witnesses stands for and how we can actually key in into the works they've done how to for us to be able to plug ourselves into them and understand how they lived so that we can live the same principles and abide under the shadow of the almighty amen, amen. hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please can you help me with it, please, Bible? Yeah, thank you. I want to read that same scripture from another version that brings the understanding closer to us. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 12. It says, As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircled us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been has been already marked out before us we look away from the natural realm and focus our attention and expectation on to Jesus who backed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its, humili its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. 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 We are encircled round by great witnesses 
I don't know about you, I love watching soccer game. And whatever game you like watching, you find out that there are, the crowds are always more than those that are actually performing. Hello, church. You get what I'm saying? The crowd are always more. And the point is, their job is to be entertained. Their job is to applaud you. <laughs> those that are performing on the stage, those soccer players, the, the fans want their team to win. In other words, this great cloud of witnesses are always there. They want us to win. In the race of life, it is us, the believers, against Satan and his cohorts. So each time we win, they celebrate. Each time we overcome sin, they rejoice. Remember the scriptures where the Bible says that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that turns away from his sinful ways. Who are those that rejoice? Those that understand the pain and the agony we are going through. The likes of Moses. The likes of Father Abraham. The likes of Deborah. The likes of Jacob. Isaac. Mention them. David. Mention them. I mean, I, I mean, there are many. If you go back to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you will see their names. The list of those who have gone ahead of us. You know what this stands for? What this means to us? It means we are not in this race alone. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are not alone. So don't, don't, don't feel bad about what you're going through. <laughs> don't feel bad about what you're going through. Whatever you're going through, it is to move you to the next level. Hallelujah. Because they went through a lot too. They became our examples today. And I love what verse 2 of the scripture we read says, is that now looking unto Jesus, everything was concluded in Jesus. From Abraham all through the promise of the son, all in, I mean, Isaac came and went to Jacob and from Jacob to Israel, you know, where Israel was born, amen, from there to, to all the, the fathers of faith, all, this, all the prophets, you know, all the judges that were raised back in the days of Israelites, you know, all those people to the time when Jesus came. Everything was concluded in Jesus. It says, let us lay aside. I like this, I like this version. Let me read it again. He said, so we must let go of every wound. Oh my God. Sometimes, I, I remember some years ago, there was, there was this act, or there was this drama. I took part in a Christian uh, uh, ministry back then. I acted as the wounded soldier. There was this song, I don't know if it was Shelly Caesar that sang the song. I don't remember. Ellen Bello, thank you. It's, she sang the song about the wounded soldier. And we had to mind the song and act it. So I, I was the one that represent, that acted as the wounded soldier. And it's, it just occurred to me that as believers, <laughs> we are soldiers of Christ. Of course, the Bible said that. But in this journey, we get wounded in the, in the battlefield sometimes. But it says, let go of every wound that has pierced us. And the sea we so easily fall into. So the wound is different from the sin we so easily fall into. He said, the Bible says we should let go. Why? Because it will not help us if we don't let go. Stop holding to your past, people. The only path I can advise you to hold on to is the work that Jesus finished on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You need to hold on to that. You need to hold on to that. 
So we're going to look at one of the cloud of witnesses today. And one of them, his name is Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jacob, <clears throat> let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. We read verses um, 20 to 22. Hebrews 11. It says, The power of faith prompted Isaac to impart a blessing to his sons, Jacob and Esau, concerning their prophetic destinies. Verse 21 says, Jacob worshipped in faith's reality at the end of his life and leaning upon his staff, he imparted a prophetic blessing upon each of Joseph's sons. I'm going somewhere. Faith inspired Joseph and opened his eyes to see into the future. <laughs> For as he was dying, he prophesied about the exodus of Israel out of Egypt and gave instructions that his bones were to be taken from Egypt with them. Now, look at me here. Everything we do is not about us. The grace, the anointing, the prophetic understanding, the prayers, the, the, the scriptural understanding, they are not about us. If you dive into the heartbeat of God to understand why is God doing all of this in my life, you will understand that it is beyond you. Faith from Abraham propelled him out of his father's house, moved him, and began to hear a voice he was not used to. The promise of God was not about Abraham. Of course, we knew that Abraham did not have a child, but in the process of life, God began to speak to him that I will bless you and give you a, a son. It's not that Abraham could not have a child from another woman. Of course. I mean, it was proven afterwards. We all knew from the scriptures that it was Sarah, Sarah Eve, by the way, that was barren at that time. But God's eternal purpose is way beyond you and I. We loving God, praying to God, getting the blessings of God is more than you and I. You will find out that the promise that God gave to Abraham Abraham did not see of, I mean, experience everything in his physical life, lifetime. Most of them were now fulfilled in the third generation. In Jacob, who later became what? Israel. Abraham was not here when it happened. Isaac, the seed, was not here when it happened. So I want us to see that, look, they do say that a good father will leave inheritance for what? For his children's children. So every blessing God is giving you is not about you. Now it goes beyond physical inheritance. Amen. If you don't have physical inheritance to give to your children, make sure you do your best for them when they are alive. When you are alive. Amen. It's not about cars and houses and money and all of that. If you give them these scriptures, you have given them the best inheritance. Because with these, they can produce a thousand times more than what you couldn't produce physically. So let's look at it. Who is this man called Jacob? Jacob is the second son of Isaac, while Isaac was the son of Abraham. Amen? Amen? And Jacob started out on the wrong foot. He started out badly. He started being a deceiver, a liar, a cheater, a you know, supplanter. He started out 
releasing negativity. So it's like negativity is inherent in him. And so he takes pleasure in cheating others. Cheating others to get to have a headway in life. We read in the Bible on how he cheated his brother to take the back right. No, he didn't stop at that. With the help of his mother, he was able to also take the blessings. Deceiver. He, he was a, a professional cheater. But by reason of several encounters, as he kept walking with God, he became the recipient of the grace of God. That is why I just want to challenge you this morning. You have been condemned by a lot of people saying you are nobody or you started out wrongly. It is not how you started. It is how you finish. You might have, you might have started wrongly, but the love of Jesus is calling you home to let you understand that you can start walking with him right now and you can finish well in him. Hallelujah. He eventually became the recipient of the grace of God and the promise proclaimed in his grandfather became fulfilled in him. In the process, while he was having an encounter with God, with the angel who came to, 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 to you know, I mean, that appeared to him, while he said, if you don't bless me, you're not going to go anywhere, angel. The angel was like, seriously? They began to battle. I'm going. He said, no. The angel said, I'm going to fly. He said, no, I'm holding you down. Let me fly. No, you stay here with me. In the process of the spiritual battle, the angel asked him, what is your name? As we're sharing this, I need you to please think within you and listen in, to your spirit's man. What is your name? Why does the angel have to ask him what his name is? Name depicts character. Your name speaks of what is embedded inside of you. God did not just give Adam that name when he created him. Adam under God did not just name the animals and give them the names just anyhow. What is your name? And the moment he spit out his name to the angel, the angel said, okay, no wonder. No wonder you've been struggling this much for many years. No wonder your life has been ups and downs for many years. But from today on, your name is being changed from Jacob to Israel. And the reason is because, he, the angel told him, because you have fought with God and you have prevailed. May you have that capacity. May we have that capacity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He fought with God and he prevailed. He became a son instead of a cheater. He no longer become, he, he, he's no longer in the queue or in the line whereby somebody has to get it first before he comes to get it. No, he is now number one in his own place. That is sonship. Spiritually speaking, he overtook. Esau. I don't want to dive into that because something began to enter my head in the relationship between him and Esau and how he actually took over and what actually, how people can take over in the realm of the spirit and you will not know that they've taken over. May your place not be replaced by another person in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. The nation of God that was created in Abraham processed in Isaac was fulfilled in Jacob. The nation of God that was created 
in Abraham, processed in Isaac, was fulfilled in Jacob. Hallelujah. An interesting experience he had moving from supplanter to sonship. What a spiritual journey. Now, this is one of the men we believers need to follow. Hallelujah. And in following these men, as the scripture says, I mean, puts it in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6, that we should follow them who through patience and endurance have received the promise of the Father. So, we should in the same way value them, impart their positive engagement, and uh, begin to refuse to make the same mistake they made. Hello? In following someone, you take the good in them, do not make the same mistake they are making. You learn from their mistake, you take the good ones, you put that together, you become a better person. Amen? Amen. And as we keep doing that, our children are learning from us, they see our mistakes, they see the good stuff we are doing, they are learning from it. So as they are growing, they are putting the good together. Amen? And when we are done, they will come into the center stage, they do it better. So you can see, if we can follow that direction, you see that the, 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 the mistakes we continue to reduce. So by the time they come into the center stage, they do theirs too. They make their own little mistake, but they have learned from my mistake, you know, they begin to do it like that, and their ge the generations after them, we also look at them, learn from the good, reduce the mistakes, and they get better. So generations after generations after generations, we continue to do better to the glory of God. And one of the things I want to hammer to us is this. That you don't see the activities of the spirit realm does not mean they don't exist. Hello? Ignorance, however, is not an excuse in the court of law. Same way, you can say you don't know. I don't know the Holy Spirit is there. I don't know Jesus died for me. I don't know the angels are surrounding me every day. I don't know that I have cloud of witnesses that are watching. They are watching. In case you don't know, now you know. Oh, well, by the time you get heaven, you want to argue with, with, with God. And God, but I didn't know, I didn't hear that message. Says who? God is making everything so easy these days. You don't have to go to this or go to that. Just turn, turn, turn in your TV. Just tune in into Facebook or tune in into Instagram. Or tune all those social... There you will hear somebody preaching truth. Even if it is TikTok. I mean, you will hear somebody speaking the truth. So you will have no excuse. Hence, our lives are entangled with this man of faith as, you know, offered and concluded in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, with uh, Uncle Jacob that we want to study, after he became a son, after he became Israel, and his life continued to function according to the dictates of the of the Holy Spirit, you know, and listening to God. God gave him 12 sons. Amen? 12 solid sons that became the 12 tribes of Israel today. And I want us to look deep into his last words to each of those children. I don't know if you have ever noticed when people are dying, the, the, the last words they give is always more powerful. Now, it's not that somebody is dying and you're crying. In this, in this, in this journey, in this kingdom, we, we don't weep when somebody is about to pass on. We celebrate. Amen? Either young or old. Yes, we feel the pain. Yes, we, we don't 
like them to go. But here is the truth, sirs and ma'am. At the point of their departure, if you have the privilege of listening to them, if they have the privilege of speaking, please listen to them very well. If they are truly of a kingdom mindset, they will bring forth the word of God that will change your future as they were going. I mean, you, if you're a good Bible student, you will know it happens in the, in the life of Jacob, it happens in the life of David, it happens in the life of Jesus Christ. You check out the, the, the last words of David, you check out the last prayer that Jesus prayed for his, his, his disciples and for you and I. So let's look at uh, what Jacob proclaimed. Over Reuben, over Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. Those are the twelve sons. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 49. Oh, blessed be the name of our Father. Amen. We start from verse 1. The Bible says, And Jacob called his sons and said, <clears throat> Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. This is a father who understands the mind of God. <laughs> Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob. And listen to Israel, your father. I want to, by revelation, open that verse 2 up. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob. And listen to Israel, your father. Okay. He is the same person addressing them now. But two personalities. Old nature leads into the new nature. Let go of the old nature, get into the new nature. You sons of Jacob, listen to Israel, your father. So he is speaking at the level of sonship right now, not at the debased lifestyle of a cheater. Are you with me? So, listen to Israel, your father. That is the new name, that is the new nature, that is the new character that he is now putting on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he began to speak as Israel, not as Jacob. He began to speak in number three. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might and the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. I mean, that verse 3 tells us something that is loaded. See, there is an expectation that is a de there is a demand from every firstborn. Hello? There is a demand. That's why Jesus being the firstborn who rose from the dead. He has to carry the load of every sons and every daughter that will come under him. So if you see Jesus, he is your brother, by the way. He is your Lord and your master, but he is the firstborn in this family. Don't worry, don't worry either you are secondborn or thirdborn, it does not matter. You are somewhere there. <laughs> Amen. Don't bother. Maybe, maybe I'm number 1,000 or number 2,000. It does not matter. We are sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The responsibility laid upon Reuben, Reuben came short of it by one action. In verse 4 it said, Unstable as water, that is terrible. You shall not excel. That is a curse. And the reason is, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it, he went up to my couch. 
Let me show us from uh, another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 20 says, Cursed is the one who lies with his father's wife. Because he has uncovered his father's bed. So Reuben did that. He he did not he did not uh, he did not cover his father's nakedness, his father's his father's bed. He did not tame his 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 his, uh, his yearning. He did not turn his sexual urge. In Genesis chapter 35, verse 32, the Bible says, And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard about it. That was why he was cursed, that he shall not excel, that is an unstable water. Because he went to the couch of his father. I wonder the way people view things these days. They play around scene and they think it's it's normal. Amen. Mm. Verse 5, he began to speak to Simeon and Levi. Mm. <laughs> this Israel knows his sons very well. <laughs> hey, may the Lord have mercy on us. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man. And in their self will they am strong an ox. Now, what is it that Jacob is doing here? He was prophesying. This is what is going to become of these children in the future. Because their ways has been explicitly revealed in the way they conduct themselves. That word cruelty is talking about violence. Amen. It says, in their anger, they slew him and they became murderers. And in their self-will, they are strong and us. That means, these guys are so strong that they broke the limb of an ox. And Jacob or Israel began to speak in verse 7. He said, cause be their anger. He caused that kind of anger. For it is fierce and they are rough, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Now, anger is an issue that most believers don't even talk about. And we don't know that anger is actually a bad thing. It took God a lot of times to deliver someone like me. Amen. I mean, the Bible says that we should be uh, uh, we should be angry, but do not sin. It's not that you accept every foolish thing that comes you. Amen. That is not gentleness. That would be foolishness. But the point is, when an anger became Something that you exercise yourself in to the extent of destroying things, to the extent of trying to kill somebody, ah, uh -uh, that is unacceptable. That is not of God. That is a demon moving you to do things that God does not want you to do. That's why Israel has to curse it to its root. 
Say, cause be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Praise the Lord. In verse 8, he began to speak about Judah. <laughs> the Bible says, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is the lion's well. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, he shall arouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Hello, church. Why does Judah get all of this good stuff? <laughs> Little wonder Jesus, when he was coming, he didn't come from the tribe of Levi, where the priesthood was actually promised. He didn't come from the tribe of Reuben. He didn't come from the tribe of Simeon. He didn't even come from the tribe of Joseph. But it came from the tribe of Judah. There is a reason. And if you're a good Bible student, you will find out that Judah is the one who actually overtook the journey spiritually from Israel. The Bible says that, but in Judah, God is known. It's in the book of Psalms. In Judah, God is known. Now, what is it about Uncle Judah here? Judah was one of the people that helped in the, when the experience of Joseph was going on. You know, when they want to sell him out. When they want to kill him. You know, there were all parts to this. Amen. But one's heart is different from the others. Amen. In, uh, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 27. Write this down from verse 29. The Bible says, Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you. And blessed be those who bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That is about those, those are words I mean about Judah. Now I, I, I need us to look at another scripture here. Thank you, Jesus. When he was calling in the lion's whelp. Ezekiel chapter 19 verse 5 says, when she saw, just write the scriptures then, Ezekiel chapter 19 verse 5, when she saw that she waited that her hope was lost, she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. <laughs> he roved among the lions and became a young lion. He, he learned to catch prey. He devoured men. He knew their desolate places and laid waste their cities. I mean, this is talking about the character of Judah. When you look at the, the way Jesus came, he came as a lamb. Amen? Amen? At first, he came as a lamb and he arose as a lion. And when he's coming back this time around, he is coming back as a lion, not as a lamb. You can kill that lamb, you can't kill the lion. <laughs> Amen. He said, and, and, and as a lion, who shall rose him? 
in, in verse 10 it says, the scepter, that word scepter is symbol of, of kingship, is authority. His authority shall not depart from Judah. Basically, Judah means praise. All right? So, if, if you understand that, look, these are brethren whose our lives are locked up with in the realm of the spirit, you begin to look into their lives, learn from their mistakes, learn the good stuff they accomplished, and reduce, do away with, by the way, the errors they have committed. Time will not permit me to go into full details this morning, but I just want us to understand these basic things about each one of them. Verse 11 says, Binding his donkeys, still talking about Judah, binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's course to the choice vine. He washed his garment, garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. What does that imply? He washed his garment in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Purity. He always clean up anytime he messes up. You remember what he did to the wife of his son? Do you remember? Tama. And when he, Tamar revealed he, herself to him. What did he do? He didn't say go kill her. He, she, she wants to destroy my integrity. No. He said, oh, you are more holy. Well, you are more righteous than I. He apologized. That is how he washed his garment in wine. Who does this also? David. David never go before God to brag that I am holy. <laughs> Anytime he is confronted by his error, what does he do? He will go put ashes upon himself and lie flat there and begin to confess his sins. Some people rejoice in their sins and we think we can bribe God with whatever it is you think you can. No! That is not how the patriarchs walk this road. Yes. That was not how they journey to become what they became. Yes, we fall. Yes, we make mistakes. Well, yes, we get into error. But we rise up at the same time. The righteous man shall fall seven times, and seven times he will rise. You have to rise up from your dust. Don't sit back and say, oh, God cannot cleanse me again. No, who says so? In fact, God's job <laughs> that why the, the reason why you gave the blood of Jesus is assignment is to clean you up. Wash your garments in wine, I mean in wine, and then wash your clothes in blood of grace. That's the blood of Jesus, that's what it represents. So these men have experienced the things that were yet to come. That you made a mistake is not the end of the road. Get up! Start again. Because in Christ there are several new beginnings. <laughs> Believe you me, there are several new beginnings. Verse 12 says, he's still talking about Judah, his eyes are darker than wine and his teeth wider than milk. Solomon came up at a time and said, I don't even know where to find you. I think you are in a dark place. He was talking about God. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth wider than milk. Even though his eyes might be darker, he's seeing in the spirit and his teeth is speaking righteousness. When he came to Zebulun in verse 13, he says, Zebulun shall dwell by the heaven of the sea. It shall become a heaven for ships. And his brother shall adjourn Sidon. 
in verse 14, he began to speak about Issachar. Issachar is a strong donkey, lying down between two bodies. He saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to, body, to bear a burden and became a band of slaves. Now, who is Issachar? Because um, nothing much was spoken about Zebulun, but just that phrase you see there. But I want to speak a little bit about Issachar. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, the Bible says, Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. They are at their command. They are at their command. In other words, the, the, the generation of Issachar is a generation of those that understand. They have spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom to know what is supposed to be done as per time. Amen? They, they don't miss words. And there are a group of people that, look, they are brethren, they are at their command because they understand that you miss it this way, everybody misses. Praise the Lord. He says, he's a strong donkey. He saw that rest was good, but he didn't go into that rest. He decided to bear a burden. That's what wisdom should be doing to us. Rest might be good, but once there is a demand in the realm of the spirit, you've got to be able to bear the burden for others, both spiritually and physically. Praying for people is carrying other people's burden. Some of us have been taught wrongly, it's all about me, my, I, and myself. No, pray for others. It's not just about your needs, your needs are they are good, God will meet them, hallelujah. But carry the burden for others too. Spend quality time to counsel someone. You don't have to study to be a counselor before you can counsel someone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was said that Peter never, I'm sorry, Paul never married. He didn't have physical experience of a marriage. But check this out. <laughs> Every marriage <laughs> scriptures that we use today, they were written by Paul. How did, you, how did he know? By revelation. By bearing other people's burden on his shoulders. He said, Husband loves your wife. Love your wife. He said, Wife, submit to your husband. How did he know? He didn't have any physical experience. But by reason of him relating with the Father, the revelation was released to him. And he was able to pen it down for us. Where was Moses? This is just a digression. Where was Moses? When God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> okay, who wrote the book of Genesis? Moses. How did he know? By revelation. Most of us are so locked up into this physical world and we think this is all we are. Oh my God. We are locked up into, years ago it was pinging, but now it is uh, TikTok, it is, uh, what is it, Snapchat, it is uh, Facebook, it is, uh, in fact, my children will say Facebook is for old people, so, <laughs> okay, you know, but we still preach the gospel through it anyway, you know, praise God, you know, it is Instagram, some, some, some average people, younger people who are not too young, they're not teenagers, but they are all the people, they are no longer into Facebook now. It is Instagram. Everybody wants to go to Instagram. And it, that's all we care about. Men, those sort of witnesses, they enter into 
to God. There was no single Facebook, no single social media in their days. Yet they understood what God was saying. They, they searched for God, they entered into God, and God unveiled himself to them. And Moses could come back and tell us how God created heavens and earth. What generation was he? Moses was not even born when Abraham was. And we think, oh, we are a new generation of believers, or we just need to be just Google, just, just Snapchat, just do this, and we you can sit with this thing for the next three hours. Instead of you spending that three hours to search the scriptures, to pray, to read, to worship, to do the things that makes and heavens will be released and downloaded into your spirit, man. I said that was a digression, by the way. Let me come back. <laughs> Hey, praise the Lord. Issachar is a strong donkey. Mind you, if you notice this reading, if you look at how Judah, Israel spoke about Judah, part of the things he said was what Judah was already doing. It's not that you shall, there are some that said it shall be like your enemies shall Come under, I mean, shall be. Uh, let, let me go back and read it. Don't let me misquote that. He said, Judah, you are, not you will, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. He said, Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies, shall. And then your father's children shall bow, that is shall. He said, Judah is a lion's well. That means at that time, Judah was already exercising all these principles. Praise the Lord. If you see how he spoke about Issachar, he said, Issachar is a strong donkey. He is. He's been practicing. Their heart connection with God has been practicing such, you know, over time. He saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to bear a body. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9, it says, So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Another heart. Another heart. Another heart. That is the heart to bear other people's body. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. Then, then shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. That word then is where you, we get the name Daniel, from where we get the name Daniela, or Daniel, like we name our children today. You know, the major function of Daniel, of Dan, pardon me, was a judge. In fact, when Rachel gave birth to him, he said, God has judged my case. So the name then means judge. You know, and um, in Genesis 30 verse 6, he said, then Rachel said, God has judged my case and he has also heard my voice and give me a son. Therefore, she called his name Dan. Right, so that means a judge, so it is a prophetic destiny. That's why, when you give birth to a child, don't just give him all kinds of un, unmeaningful name, don't take goat and join it with sheep and say she go or go she. Like people can, I mean, you hear some names, but like, what is the meaning of your name? Some don't know because those names don't have meaning. From where I'm from, before you name a child. Most especially if you are in a Christian family, the father will have to go and pray. Seek God's face before you give that child a name. Each of my children, by the grace of God, bears the, the names that God gave me to give them. And if you know them, they are manifesting gradually. Amen. 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 
You know, the one that bears Daniela knows how to judge her younger brother very well. <laughs> Amen. You know, they, they know how to. Judah, whose name is praise, he knows how to praise God on his drums. And you ask wisdom, whose, whose name is wisdom? She's really excelling with the wisdom of God upon her. She, she knows how to coordinate stuff. And you talk about Baraka, oh my God, which means the value of Baraka, which means blessings. Oh, he's full of talents, man. Amen. Amen. That is, by the way, also, when you give back to your child, try and give good names. Because names form character. All right? Um, verse 17 says, Then shall be a serpent, oh my God, by the way, a viper by the path, that bite the horse's heels, so that its riders shall fall backward. I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. Now, what does that imply? A serpent, by the way, a viper by the path. Now, we know the character, one of the good characteristics of a snake, either you call it a viper, you call it a, a serpent, or whatever name, is that he knows how to maneuver its way. Before you can kill a snake, you will you will do a lot of work. You will. You will do a lot of work. Because before you catch him here, he's already on the other side. Amen. That is, there's a wisdom to navigate your way. Through issues. Through circumstances of life. That's one of the gifts that Dan carries. In verse 18, it says, I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. This is a man talking about Jacob, who is on a sick bed, it was time for him to depart. He knows. And he was releasing what is in his spirit man to the next generation on what they needed to do, how to conduct themselves, and what is going to happen to them, so that they will be aware of it. It's not a man who just disappeared and left the children like that, not knowing what next generation is going to give birth to. That's why I said earlier, it is not about us. It's about God and what God wants to do in the next generation. Hallelujah. In verse 19, he spoke about God. God, he said, a troop shall tramp upon him. Wow. But he shall triumph at last. Hello, church. A troop shall, shall tramp on him, but he shall triumph. That is a guarantee of victory at the end. Hallelujah. It's a guarantee. It is sure. Victory is sure. You might be trampled under the feet, on, 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 I mean, under, under the feet of so many people around you. You might be regarded as nobody. People might ridicule you. People might take you or consider you to be, oh, he is nobody. She is nobody. You don't worry about them. Look into the word of God. God is saying you are somebody. And you are triumphing at the end of the day. And you are becoming victorious. Amen. Amen. He spoke about Asher in verse 20. He said, bread from Asher shall be rich. And he shall yield royal dainties. Bread from Asher shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties. I mean, that is powerful. That is awesome. That is awesome. In uh, Deuteronomy in the chapter 33, verse 22, the Bible says, And of Asher, he said, Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers. And let him dip his foot in oil. Ooh. Let him dip his foot, his foot in oil. If you reference that to the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 6, the Bible says, When my steps were bathed with cream, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. Now that is, when you see oil and water in the Bible, is a representation of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's a representation of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. Naphtali is a deer let loose. 
He used beautiful words. Verse 22 says, I don't want, I mean, my time is, is actually running out, so I'm just going to push it through. I mean, Naphtali, Naphtali, Naphtali is a deer. As the deer panted for the water, oh my soul longs after thee. You alone at my heart desire and I've come to worship you. In other words, as a deer, his heart is panted after God. After water, my heart pants after you, O oh God. That is naturally for you. He uses beautiful words. Why would he use beautiful words? Because the words that he received from God, he speaks them. Joseph, a fruitful buff. A fruitful buff by a well. <laughs> oh God, time will not permit me. His branches run over the world. The archers are bitterly grieved him. Shot at him and hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. By the God of your father who will help you. By the God of your father who will what? Will help you. And by the almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above Blessings of the deep that lies beneath. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. Up to the utmost bound of the everlasting eels. They shall be on the head of Joseph. And on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brothers. Little wonder... How Joseph became the icon in that family. Amen. The only children that Jacob blessed, children's children that Jacob blessed, were the children of Joseph. Ephraim and Manasseh. And while he was, you see, don't deal with godly people. Be careful about who you are fighting with. Once God is is in someone's generation. Let, let me just show you. Maybe I'm going to stop here. I'll just speak briefly about Benjamin and we will we, we stop here. Jacob was to bless the sons of Joseph. And Joseph took his two sons to him to bless. He put the first son on his right hand and he put the, the, the second son on the left. I don't know if you know about God's program. God does not see the way you see. And while Jacob was about to bless them, he crisscrossed his hand. Joseph said no. Jacob said yes. <laughs> because it is believed that upon your right hand, authority is situated there. So on whom you put the right hand on is where the authority will reside on. Joseph said, no, what? no, no, not this one, it's this one. He said, no, 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 just leave my hand the way it is. He too will be blessed, but this, what I am seeing, the revelation of God I am seeing about this one is heavier and greater and comes with greater responsibilities. So let it be, and he blessed them. Everything Joseph went through is a plus to his success. While he was being hated by his brother, while he was being kept in the, in the, in the, in the pit, while he was being sold out as a slave. I mean, how can you sell your brother out as a slave? People are mean. No? And they, they <laughs> for more, just, they hated him so much that they don't want him around them. I had a preacher once preach many years ago, he said, your brothers can sell you, only your half-brothers can sell you. Mm. Mm. And they were his half-brothers indeed. Mm. He didn't want all these blessings were released upon him. He says, the blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. That is, that is, that is deep. 
You know why I said it is deep? If you look at the prosperity of Abraham, or, oh, and the prosperity of Isaac, or, oh. and now Jacob said, his own blessing has gone beyond that of his ancestors. In other words, he was not speaking about physical blessings. He was talking about spiritual fulfillment. Because what God spoke about, I mean, in Abraham was fulfilled in him. What is it that God is fulfilling in your life? It's not about how rich or how, how much money you have in your bank account. What is it that God is fulfilling in your life that is becoming a reality to you that is beyond the physical? Launch into that. That is your real spiritual portion. He said, uh, I mean, on, on his head, he said, uh, on his head shall be the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. And on, on, on the crown of his head, of him who was separated from his brothers. Verse 27, and I close with that. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey. And at night he shall divide the spoil. Now, if you go with me to Um, let me see, Esther. Um, at the book of Esther, chapter 8, verse uh, 11. The Bible says, By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate and he lays all the forces of any people or province that will assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. Amen. Who accomplished this in Israel? It was Benjamin. A ravenous wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Amen. So, these are the words that Jacob on his bed, deathbed bed, released upon his children. Verse 28, which is the last verse I'm going to stop finally on, it says, All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them, and he blessed them. He blessed each one according to his own blessing. This Jacob is one of the cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. They don't just see things physically, they see things spiritually. And if you lost your spiritual sight, you are lost forever. Because then we have a way to come into your home and party with you. And you will think everything is going on fine. That you have a better job or you have good uh, grades or you have a good house or good vehicles is not a proof that you are actually in the purpose of God. People that are not in the purpose of God have better. <laughs> but as you live your life every day, do you lock yourself into this purpose in some? May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness, for speaking to us. We thank you for sharing your heart with us. We thank you for opening us up to know exactly what you want us to do as your people. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.